Thanks. Any other ideas? Well, we've always talked about the melting pot. Mm -hmm. So the melting pot. So right away we can see there's some contradicting ideas, right? So on the one hand we have like being ethnically diverse and on the other hand we have white. We have a melting pot but then we have Christian. Being a citizen is, you know, uh, an interesting question around being an American. Is citizenship what it means to be an American? What if you're a U.S. citizen who's never lived in the U.S. because you have U.S. citizen parents and you live somewhere else? What if you've lived here your whole life and you've never had U.S. citizenship because here potentially even before you were a year old. Um, there's many people in this country who fit into that category. Um, has this felt like it's more or less expansive in the last year of our political debates as it's become very, very uh, heated conversation around, well actually sorry, let me break this one step back. Who, what are, who are immigrants? So we know who Americans are, some contradicting ideas. Who are immigrants in the US? People of color? Okay, I'm just gonna write in this area here. People of color. Who else are immigrants? Not born here. Any more ideas about sort of the qualitative ideas around who immigrants are or aren't. So there's a kind of like a people put together the idea that someone who's an immigrant also doesn't have papers very often, right? So um, I'll just write no unequal status. That may or may not be true, but there's an idea that that's often true. Accent. Accent. Any other kind of ways that immigrants get talked about in the media that you've been hearing this last week? Dress differently. Excuse me? Dress, dress differently? differently? Okay. Working at uh, low skill jobs. Is it over a Okay, so I heard dress differently, working low schools, low skill jobs. I heard no right to be here. Bad and take out resources. Okay. How sort of stealing resources. So that's what we hear sort of about contemporary immigrants. What about our immigrant history? How do we hear about that? There's another narrative around immigration, right? We're all immigrants. We're all immigrants. <coughs> Anything else that you guys have heard? This idea that, you know, um, hardworking, is that something that comes to mind when you hear about people talk about their immigrants? Parents, grandparents, hardworking. Sorry? American dream, so people who've gone after the American dream. Yeah. And sometimes we talk about immigrants as whether or not they can contribute economically. Mm -hmm. Either they steal jobs or they bring jobs. Okay. So there's the economic terms. Right. Yeah. So I'm just going to put um, money economy. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Um, I just want to get us to start thinking a little bit about some of the contradictions in the way that these ideas are being discussed in the public sphere, so we can start thinking more critically about it. And um, I just wanted to do one more thing on that lines, which was, are there words that you've been hearing this, this last year or two years that are confusing to you that we can try to flesh out today around immigration? Do you have any questions around? I'll just throw out some ideas like, uh, what is a refugee? Is that a question we should talk about or answer? Is there any words that we can kind of get through today? What's the question? The question is if there are any words related to this topic of immigration that you've been hearing thrown around or ideas that you want clarified. And I'm not sure I can clarify all of them, but we could try to clarify some of them today, if you've been hearing some words. I recently did a workshop where the question of what sanctuary cities means came up. So I think we could talk about that if people have been hearing that and are curious what a sanctuary city is. Have you
Have people heard that term, sanctuary city? Some nods in the room. Do people know what that means? Yes? Everybody who's nodding is saying yes, but I wonder if the people who don't know what it means aren't, aren't showing sure, yes. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mention that a little bit later. Are there any other words along the, that line that might be a little bit confusing? Green card. Okay. Any other words? People have questions about the word undocumented. What that means? Have you heard that word before? An undocumented immigrant and wondered what it meant? never defined, so it's worthwhile to take a case. So um, I'm going to present a little bit about the project that I'm going to show the film, and then we'll talk about all this stuff. Is that good? Okay, awesome. Um, I wanted to sh start by showing you guys a little video from Gracie Boggs. Um, how many of you have heard of Gracie Boggs? One hand, two hands. Can I get one of the two hands to tell us who Gracie Boggs is? Well, she, oh, oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Oh. That was the light. Yeah. Oh, the light. <laughs> was it a student? Was it a student? Let the student speak. I have no idea who's a student and who's a Oh, it's your <laughs> Well, she's, uh, I don't know if she's still alive. She, she passed away she in the last year. At like 100 or something. Or, yeah. Yeah, so she, and she was a radical all her life. And she was involved <coughs> in the um, uh, um, anti-Asian American movement. And, and didn't she marry, I don't know if it was an African. Very well, radical. Yeah, so she's an activist. She's also a philosopher. She wrote lots of books. She's a historian also. So if you're interested in American history, philosophy, radical politics, she was involved in the labor movement, civil rights movement. She was 100 years old, so she was involved in many, many movements. Um, and she's also just an amazing Asian American that we don't hear very much about, you know, um, this legacy. So it's an exciting person to add to the people you know about in U.S. history. So Grace. Lee Boggs, that's spelled Grace, which you guys probably know, L-E-E, -E, and then Boggs, B-O-G-G-S. I want that little clip just as a little bit of inspiration um, around this idea of reimagining, and reimagining when it comes to the question of belonging, I think I'm particularly interested in asking these ideas around reimagining our ideas of nation and culture and place. But we can reimagine many other things as she suggested. And I just realized there's a documentary film about her that's showing tomorrow night at Beacon Hill. So if you guys are interested in her, come and talk to me afterwards and I'll try to find the information. She's awesome and the film's gonna be awesome. Um, so yeah, one of the questions that I'm asking in this project is who gets to define belonging? And um, I think, um, we know that on a legal basis, our government institutions define belonging, but within our own day-to-day -day lives, we also have a very big role in um, both creating a sense of belonging for ourselves and also for the people around us. So this is something we can come back to in the end. Um, I actually wanna jump to the film, but I just wanna show you two things quickly, which is that online, there is a website called reimaginebelonging.org. If you are interested in immigration history, um, whether it's for a class um, or for your own personal interest, we have a website with over, it's about 80 events for the US and about 80 events for Germany um, of immigration history. And we made an explicit intention not to frame it only around classical immigration history, but also how ideas of citizenship and belonging have been defined in this country. Because we wanted to make sure to include some histories that are often somehow excluded from the conversation, including black American history, native history. Um, those were the two in particular in the US that we were interested in, and in Germany, there's a different set. 
Um, so if you're interested in how the issues we're talking about now are related to history, this website is a resource for you. Um, it's very easy to navigate. I think you can filter by the topics that you're interested in. And then we also have um, a story collection where you can watch many, many personal stories from young people um, in Germany and the US that I interviewed over the last 10 years. I forgot to mention that. I've been working on this for 10 years. So there's a lot of content. There's a lot of material up there. Um, there's about 100 stories online right now. We have 400. We just haven't released them all. And um, if you are, especially if you're personally looking at these questions in your own life, and you're wanting to find other people who are, have reflected on the same topics, this is a place for you to go. Um, do you guys have any questions about that before I click away? Okay, so I'm going to go to the phone. Sound good? Um, this is going to be an open Q&A because I talk longer in the beginning than I was So why don't we just open it up to questions, and if you don't have questions, then I'll keep going. Okay. When was the Genesis? Six? Oh, what is it? It was a, whew, the details. Maybe someone remembers better than me. It was um, quite a while ago, probably 2005 or 2004, that six young people in Jenna, Louisiana, were um, very unfairly, um, received very, very harsh sentences for a crime that I'm not sure if they didn't commit it or it was just complete over sentencing. But it was um, six black young people in Louisiana who received very, very harsh sentences. In a very inappropriate way. Yeah. I should refresh myself on that event before there was a hand back there. Uh, <coughs> did you have more s subjects than you know these three that you you know um, interviewed and shot? And if yes, then you know what made these three stand out? Yeah. So as I showed that this picture, <coughs> sorry, huh? Um, just showing right now, and I can even pull the website. I did, I interviewed about 50 people to choose the four people. And even from the four that you see here, um, I followed four others who didn't make it into the film. Um, and what what um, made me chose to choose to go with these people? Um, a, a combination of things. One was that I was interested in having really different perspectives and really different um, life experiences. So you can see they're very different from one another. Um, I wanted people who were in their own way reimagining belonging through their life and through their work. So they weren't necessarily kind of accepting what had been given to them by society, but were finding ways creatively to deal with it, whether that was through their artwork or through their activism, but they were really dealing with it. Um, and people who had stories that I could follow. So if you're a filmmaker, you might meet really interesting people. And I interviewed some really interesting people, but they didn't have anything going on in their life that I could follow and tell over time. So I had to find people who also had stories that I could follow. And by the end, I was really looking for something specific. In the beginning, I was really, really open, and I chose one, chose two. But by the time I had my final protagonist, I knew what I wanted. Um, so I won't give it away. But yeah, well, I should say, it took me a long time to find Tanya. It took me a while to find someone who was willing to be on camera talking about being undocumented. That experience, it's not just a risk for her, but a risk for her family. Um, it's only because she was involved in that level of being public about her status, not just in the film, but out in the world, that she was willing to do that with the film. So, yeah. But you still keep up with them? I do, yeah, I do keep up with them, yeah. I followed, I followed um, them for about seven years. So I got to know them very well, as you can imagine. Also, you know, being a, a documentary filmmaker, you don't just sit and do interviews, you go with people to meet their families, to go to work with them. Somehow you know their life in a very holistic way. And um, so I think we both feel very close to each other with all of them, yeah. Another question right there? Um, it's interesting that you talked about uh, your experience, you know, being mistaken for an Albanian immigrant in Greece. Um, um, just from my personal experience uh, in, in America, you know, white immigrants maybe face a different sort of, um, you know, not hatred, but, you know, like a different sort of xenophobia as compared to people who are not white. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering if, you know, you ever talked to somebody, you know, who was a white immigrant in America. Yes. For the experience of course. Yes, definitely. So definitely, I think that when, when we come back to this question of white, white and immigrant in the U.S. right now are 
almost seem as two different categories. So like New York has a big Russian immigrant community, but um, people are surprised when you hear a white person speaking with a Russian accent. People assume that white people will have a very um, standard American accent. You know, and, um, I do think there's a very strong conflation, and I do think that the racism that um, white immigrants don't experience is notable. Um, the questions that most of the white people from immigrant backgrounds face was more around questions of identity, questions of culture, you know, having one kind of language and set of traditions at home that being different from friends. Those are common experiences that many, many immigrant groups face. Um, almost all the people that I spoke to have challenges with the fact that their parents grew up one place, they're growing up in another place, these two sets of cultures and traditions can be challenging at different times to navigate. Um, but the added dimension of, of systemic racism was absent completely with the, with the white immigrants. So yes, I think that's true. But I think the other thing that's interesting about that question is also that whiteness, as we understand it in the US, um, is not sim defined equally in other places in the world. So for example, in Germany, um, the majority of immigrants in Germany, the biggest immigrant group is Turkish German, who in the US are very much on the borderline. Muslim, but many Turkish Germans have kind of light complexions, even blue, green eyes, would, would be read by many people as white. In Germany, Turkish people are kind of the most targeted, um, discussed minority group. And even for somebody like me with a Greek background, Germany brought guest workers from the Mediterranean and North Africa. And so most of the immigrants came from Spain, Italy, Greece, and some and Turkey, and then a little bit from, from Morocco and, and North Africa. Um, so those groups of people were grouped together as the guest workers. They were other. And then after September 11th, when Islam became really the, first it was the immigrants, and then it became Islam after 9-11 as the, the big, um, you know, sorry, I'm, I'm you know, scapegoat for all kinds of social ills. So now the European guest workers were kind of off the hook, and, and it became about Turkish and uh, you know Arab immigrants or refugees mostly. Um, so sort of whiteness shifted over the last decade and a half in Germany. Um, and I think an example like Greece is another example. Albanians actually tend to be more light skinned than Greek people. A lot of Albanians are more blonde and white than Greek people. So the same kind of ideas we have about dominant culture and, and skin, like how the the way it's constructed in the US may not be the way it's constructed somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, yeah I, I was just curious, uh, um, how did you, I missed the introduction, so how, how did you um, uh, go about uh, choosing New York and, and Berlin as your primary yeah. location? That's a good question. Um, so I know you guys are about to need to take off. New York and Berlin, Berlin is the biggest immigration country in Europe. Uh, it's the third biggest immigration country in the, in the world. US is the first and Russia is the second. So um, when I started thinking about a city to compare with New York, uh, Berlin made a lot of sense as a place where, um, although it doesn't get talked about as much in the media immigration in, Europe, in Germany, it's actually setting the tone for a lot of what happens in the rest of Europe. And also, I started the project in 2006, and Germany had just passed a major overhaul of their immigration system. And so people actually, when I spoke to people in Germany, does this make sense here, does this make sense now? People said, yes, please do it here, please do it now. We need new points of view in this debate, because the debate was really racist, and people were looking for new input into the conversation. So that's why I chose Germany. recognize that we're at the end of our time and I want you all to please join me in thanking Christina for her time and energy. I'm not sure if she has time to take questions as people are leaving, um, but if you have questions, she'd be a great person to chat with. There is also the Recluse and Roots sign-up sheet. I'm not sure if you want to mention. Yeah, so if you're interested, the full film hasn't been released. It's going to come out later this year. So if you want to get news about the film when it's coming out in Seattle, just sign up on the mailing list. There's also postcards. And if you're interested to get involved, we're a collaborative project. There's about 20 people involved between Germany and the US. If you ever want to do 
from an internship and media projects, just come up and talk to me and we can see if there's a way to get you involved. I know you've all been a little bit quiet today. I will assume that if you had more time, you wouldn't have less to say because I know that these issues that we talked about affect you and you all have a lot of feelings about them. So feel free to come talk to me now um, if you're interested. Thank you. I will take your service. And again, thank you for being here.